present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. Do you want the whole truth? I don't think you're ready. Governments don't control things. A government can't control the economy without controlling people. It's Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. Well, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Glad you're here, right here on the AFR Talk Network. How's your day going? What made you smile today? Think of that and put a smile on your face. Because the numbers won't. That's right. Off by 80% for their month. Projection. The Obamacare signups regarding, well, Obamacare and the scorecard, if you will. 100,000 enrollees, as Ovik Roy put it, 100,000 enrollees and 5 million cancellations. Wow. we got a big show tonight. We're going to be talking about this as well as a host of other topics, bottom of the hour. Why do you dislike President Obama? If you do, why do you like President Obama if you do? Is it something to do with the color of his skin or his policies? You'll have a chance to chime in and answer Joe Scarborough. Yeah. You answered George Clooney last night? Joe Scarborough tonight. We'll also bring you Sarah Palin being accused of racism. And we'll give you a report on that in a segment. But first, we're going to go to Hans von Spakovsky, Senior Legal Analyst over the Heritage Foundation. But before we get to him, I want to play for you what Bill Clinton said yesterday regarding keeping the promise. Roll it. Third problem is for young people mostly, but not all young, who are in the individual market whose incomes are above 400% of the poverty low. They were the ones who heard the promise, if you like what you got, you can keep it. I met a young man just this week who has a family, two children, bought in the individual marketplace. His policy was canceled and one was substituted for it that doubled his premium. Now, I asked him, I said, same coverage? He said, yeah. And I said, but are your co-pays and deductibles the same? He said, no, they're much, much lower. So he said, in the years when I use health care, I might actually save money. But he said, you know, we're all young and we're all healthy. So I personally believe, even if it takes a change in the law, the president should honor the commitment the federal government made to those people and let them keep what they got. Keep that one in mind, even if it means changing the law. Jay Carney asked about this yesterday. White House Press Secretary responded. Roll it. What I would tell you is that the Upton bill allows insurers to sell 2013 plans in 2014 to anyone. It does not just continue 2013 plans in 2014 for people enrolled in those plans. That's uh, the problem that I just described and creates all sorts of problems for insurers who are trying to sell plans that meet the basic standards. Uh, and, uh, you know, and it allows those insurers who would sell those 2013 plans that either uh, charge you double or put caps on uh, benefits or, or do any of a number of things that make those plans um, insufficient when it comes to basic coverage uh, and, and basically sell them to any takers. And obviously, if the coverage is substandard, they would uh, at least potentially be able to undersell those plans and, and undermine uh, the basic premise of the Affordable Care Act, which is to provide basic benefits uh, affordable for affordable quality health insurance for everyone. Same would be the case for the Senate. I don't, I'm not, I don't have the details on that. I would just say that broadly speaking, uh, that applies to the Upton legislation. That broadly speaking, that we do not see that as uh, fixing the problem. We see that as throwing the uh, you know baby out with the bathwater. Well, very interesting. Hans von Spakovsky, manager, election reform, election law reform initiative, and senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Welcome back. How are you, Hans? I'm doing fine, Crane. We've got a lot to cover, so I'll get to the first question. Will they be able to fix this law by not enforcing a part of it, like the individual mandate, by amending it through legislation, or are they going to have to repeal the entire law? Uh, the answer is that um, they might be able to 
temporarily delay some bad parts of it, but the only way to, to fix it is to ultimately repeal it. I mean, for example, as you know, right now there's discussion in Congress mm-hmm. about um, passing a law that would basically do a one-year extension of the current health plans that people have. So all the folks getting cancellation notices, uh, those policies would continue, even though they don't meet the standards set out by the Obamacare law. Well, that might help people who um, have gotten a notice of cancellation, but the policy hasn't canceled it. But that's not going to help what we now know are millions of people whose policies have already been terminated. So, bottom line, that's not going to really help them and if it does it's for a year is he if five million up to five million uh, or close to it just under five million people have gotten these notices hans and so whether it's the upton bill in the house or the the uh, johnson bill in the senate regarding the extension of these things it, it doesn't seem that it would fix the problem as you just highlighted so i guess ted cruz was right oh no he, he was <laughs> now now, now, look, I, I do yes. think that bill is a minimum thing that ought to be passed, because at least it'll, it'll help save some folks who haven't yet had their policy uh, mm-hmm. canceled. And, you know, at least one of the bills would also not just apply to individual insurance, but it would also apply to group insurance, because, remember, group insurance is, is going to run into the same problem next, next year of not meeting these very high standards that the uh, administration has, has put in. Look, one quick point. Carney yes. said, well, we want everybody to have a policy that has very basic stuff in it. But that is completely wrong. The whole problem is, is they've uh, treated the um, insurance like a Christmas tree and have said that health insurance policies have to have all of these things in it which many folks may not want. You know, you know if you're a, you're a widower and you, you, you don't need to worry about maternity coverage, for example, you'd want to go to your company and get a health insurance policy that doesn't provide maternity coverage because that way you don't have to pay for it. But under the, the, the Obama plan, you can't make that kind of a choice. What, what gets me about this is the way the funding is set up. They need the $7 million to sign up. They're not going to get that. The website, even the website comes online it doesn't look well uh, it doesn't look like they will they make a false comparison to the romney plan and it's interesting because when they reference that and say well with romney care the enrollment numbers weren't really there but the comparison and this is pointed out in the national review uh, a place where we can read your great work as well the hhs officials or excuse me the comparison isn't quite fair. Massachusetts open enrollment period lasted for 11 months before the individual mandate kicked in, and thousands of previously uninsured Massachusetts residents were automatically enrolled in the plans immediately. So they make these false comparisons, and they keep playing the game as if the website's the only issue, but the whole structure is the issue, Hans. And yes. So tell me, where do we go from here in the sense of, I realize... So, the bills have elements that could save some people and help some people. I get that, like like what we mentioned with Johnson and Upton. But where do we go from here legislatively? It sounds to me like you've got to pull the whole thing out because it's it's going to contaminate the market to the degree that it already has, forcing people to forcing companies to give up uh, insurance on their on their employees. Yeah, no, look, not only is it going to force uh, employers to give up insurance on their employees, but I can tell you that if this stays in effect, uh, it's going to start forcing insurance companies out of business. And look, you know, there are some folks that believe that, you know, there are people in this administration that that actually is their long-term goal, to collapse the insurance market itself, because then they'll say, see, we need to have a national, single-payer government system the way Europe and Canada does. And, and from here, legally speaking, when the president selectively enforces particular elements of it or delays parts of it, it is that in his purview? What, what's going on with the rule of law here, and what does it speak to for future presidents? 
r- rule of law? They've, they've never heard of that in this administration. <laughs> no, look, the, the, all of the things that they're doing are not within the statute. Uh, most of them the president does not have the authority to do, but he's just doing it anyway and getting away with it. And the only way that that is checked is by the legislative branch, branches, pardon me. I mean, that's the check on that. Uh, yes? It, it is, yes. Okay. Because a lot of people are wondering, Hans, the reason I ask that is a lot of people are wondering, hey, can he just do this and nobody can do really anything about it? And that, that really goes to, I guess, public opinion and the public being informed and putting enough pressure on our elected representatives to do something about it. No, that's right, and uh, that's very difficult when you have a uh, democratically controlled Senate that stops all mm-hmm. efforts by uh, Congress to try to do something about this. Very frustrating. Well, tell me some good news. HHS mandate, Seventh Circuit Court. Yeah, appeals. that's right. The what? yeah, the Seventh Circuit joined uh, two other circuit courts and held that. Um, the HHS mandate, which which says that companies have to provide uh, abortion, sterilization, contraception services, cannot be applied to uh, the plaintiff in that case was a small a family-owned company. They're, they're uh, construction uh, contractors. Uh, the two owners, a, a married couple, um, said that doing that would violate their Catholic faith, and the court said... Uh, yes, they can assert this right, even though they're they're asserting it as the owners of this corporation. So, does that mean for all businesses or a particular size of business? Uh, you know, there's really uh, that. Uh, I don't think the opinion was really limiting in that way. It, mm-hmm. it, it basically held that uh, you don't lose your you don't lose your ability to practice your religious faith when you become the owner of a corporation. That's pretty huge, isn't it? It 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 is, and it's a it's a very very good development. All right, tell me about some not so good developments in regard to Texas and voter ID, or with unions. Either way, you've been covering these. Tell me, what's the latest in Texas on voter ID? Uh, well, they actually had an election um, last week that went very very well. The New York Times wrote an article about it. They seemed surprised. Mm-hmm. Uh, after all the dire predictions of how uh, people would be uh, unfortunately affected, and it went very well. And uh, they made a big deal about the fact that Greg Abbott, the attorney general, mm-hmm. actually had to vote a provisional ballot because his uh, photo ID name didn't match the name on the registration list. But he got to vote, his vote counted, and you know what it did is it alerted him to the fact that there was a discrepancy in his, his voter registration that he got fixed. Did you get any credit for pointing out how this does help and actually improve the system? Uh, no, the, no? no, everybody uh, on the on the left side of the political aisle simply said, "Oh, this is just terrible because uh, people like uh, Greg Abbott, you know, weren't able to vote when you know they were able to vote, but they had to fix a problem, and that that helps improve the accuracy of the voter registration system." So that's a good thing. Yeah, I just I think they should just put who's counting someplace, like a link to it. Uh, so the book that you wrote, as well as some of your research, because you've been called every name in the book for defending accountability and simple procedures that we have to follow when we go into a federal building. And I think the smear campaign that's been run against you, because you've been at the forefront of exposing voter ID laws and the truth about voter ID laws, I just think they owe you an apology. And like unicorns, I probably won't see one. From the mainstream uh, that, media. I, I, yeah, I, I don't think I'm ever going to see one either. <laughs> well, we appreciate you. What's going on with the union unions and a deal in Florida, Hans? Uh, there the were uh, arguments, arguments yes. for the U.S. Supreme Court today in a case uh, involving a uh, union and a company. And basically what happened was the company entered into an agreement with this union that wanted to unionize their employees. Yeah, in which the the company said, "Listen, we'll give you access to all our employees. Um, mm-hmm. We won't say a word about the union, and the union agreed to not picket and to spend a lot of money to get a casino gambling initiative passed. A, a, an employee filed suit saying you really are not allowed to do that, and so." Uh, the court heard arguments today whether or not this kind of neutrality group, they call it, violates federal law. Hans von Spakowski.
senior legal analyst at the Heritage Foundation, author of Who's Counting. Thank you, my friend. Great update. Great to be with you. Take care. Crane Durham's nothing but truth. AFR Talk.